Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into the different types of blockchain. Basically, blockchain is categorized into two types. The very first is permissionless blockchain. Now, inside this permissionless blockchain comes public blockchain. And the second type of blockchain is permissioned blockchain. Under permission blockchain comes private blockchain, then comes consortium blockchain. Now, apart from this, you can see this particular area where it comprises of a combination of permissionless as well as permissioned blockchain. And this particular highlighted area is specifically called as hybrid blockchain. So, you can see these are the different types of blockchain. Now, we are going to look into every single type one by one and we are going to look into details of it. So, let's get started. So, the first broad type of blockchain is permissionless blockchain. Now, as the name suggests, it is permissionless. Whoever is going to participate in that blockchain network won't be required to take permissions from any authority because no authority is going to rule that particular type of blockchain. So, here open participation is present. They, each and every node will be having equal rights to participate in that particular blockchain network. Now, this particular type of blockchain is well known for its enhanced security because in this particular type of blockchain, as there are no restrictions for any node to participate in it, there will be many nodes who are going to be a part of this particular blockchain. To add any block into the blockchain network, there will be validation done by each and every node. So as many number of nodes, as many number of validations will be done to add that particular block into the blockchain network. So, there will be a lot of security in this particular case. Hence, it is well known for its security. Now, in this particular type of blockchain network, whichever nodes are going to participate, they will be anonymous. Their real world identities won't be revealed to any other nodes who are present inside that particular blockchain network. The transactions that are done by that particular node will be publicly available, but their real world identities won't be revealed as all the information for that particular node will be available in a cryptographic manner. So either it will be encrypted or it will be hashed. So that is why pseudo anonymity is maintained in this particular permissionless blockchain network. But there is a disadvantage. This particular type of blockchain is not efficient because there is a lot of computational resources which will be required for every single processing before adding the block to the blockchain network each and every node has to validate the transaction so for that a lot of power is required and apart from that it is totally expensive that is why it is not that efficient when we compare it with the other type of blockchain so i hope this particular thing regarding the permissionless blockchain is clear to you all now let's move on to the next broader type of blockchain which is permissioned blockchain so here permission blockchain as the name suggests it requires every single node to have permission from the central authority to be a part of the blockchain network here in permissioned blockchain there is a restricted access that means each and every node cannot be a part of this blockchain network it, only some nodes will, will be given some rights to be a part of this blockchain network and that too out of that nodes not every node will have the same rights only some nodes will be having the rights to mine the nonce as well as some nodes will be having the rights to perform certain transactions everything will be controlled by a particular authority that will be that will set its rules apart from that here the identities of each and every nodes who are going to participate in the blockchain network they are going to be transparent so the nodes information that is the real world information will be transparent to each and every node who is a part of that particular blockchain network now, since the participants are known, they are reliable. Now, since there is a restricted access, that means only a few number of nodes will be able to participate in this particular blockchain network. That is why it has an efficiency in processing. That means since there are very less number of nodes, the number of validations that are required to add the block to the blockchain network will also be less. So here the processing is less when compared to the permissionless blockchain. So I hope this type of blockchain is also clear. Now, as you know that this two broader type of blockchain has some types inside it. 
as you know that we have seen this inside permissionless blockchain there is public blockchain inside permissioned blockchain there is private and consortium and the combination of these two types of blockchain that is permissionless and permission comprises of a new type of blockchain that is hybrid blockchain so now we are going to look into all these types of blockchain one by one starting with public blockchain so here is the public blockchain so as the name suggests the public blockchain comes under permissionless blockchain hence the permission is not required since there is no central authority whose permission has to be taken to access that particular network this is decentralized that means there is no central authority who is going to rule the blockchain network it is open to anyone and it has equal participation that means every single node will be given same amount of rights and same privileges this type of blockchain can be used for cryptocurrency exchange it is highly used for cryptocurrency transactions you might have heard about bitcoin ethereum and litecoin so these uses the mechanism of public blockchain these are cryptocurrencies which uses the mechanism of public blockchain now inside public blockchain the nodes validate the transaction whichever transaction takes place inside the blockchain network each and every transaction will be validated by the nodes who are a part of that particular blockchain network with the help of the process of mining which we already have discussed in the previous video in the components of blockchain apart from that earning cryptocurrency as a reward is also one of the type through which the node can validate the transaction by using these concepts it promotes the community participation as well as trust because here we are not going to rely on the nodes because their identities are not known to us here we are going to rely on the network here we are going to rely on the algorithm or the process that we are going to use that is the mining process here this type of blockchain is well known for its trust and transparency because every single transaction which is performed will be publicly available to all here identities won't be revealed but the network that is going to be used that is reliable it maintains trust within the community as well as every single user is having the privilege to contribute to the network's improvement there are some merits and demerits of this public blockchain so let's have a look at it first of all it is trustable and transparent because the identities are not revealed but here the transactions are publicly available so it maintains the transparency there is no intermediary that means there is no central authority who is going to govern this particular type of blockchain now since this is kind of an open blockchain that is why it is more secure because there will be millions of nodes who is going to be a part of this public blockchain since there is no permission required so every single node will have to validate the transaction so more number of validation will create more security as well as more trust that is why it is secured when we compare it with the other type of blockchain now when we talk about demerits there is a scalability issue because here if we try to add many number of nodes in this particular type of blockchain then it is going to take a lot of computational power it is going to be expensive so there are some issues when it comes to scalability apart from that here the speed is also less because there are many number of nodes to validate that particular transaction to form block that is why the transaction speed is very less in proof of work consensus algorithm it takes 10 minutes for one single block to be added in the blockchain network so you can see the transaction speed is very slow also it requires high energy so in and all i hope everything is clear to you all what exactly is this public blockchain what are the merits and demerits this this might have cleared all your doubts regarding public blockchain as well as it might have given you a basic idea about what exactly it is so i hope it is clear now let's move on to the next type of blockchain which is private blockchain now this private blockchain comes under the permissioned blockchain so as the name suggests private blockchain will be controlled by a single organization the private blockchains or they are also termed as managed blockchain they are permissioned as well as they are overseen by a central authority here there will be a central authority who is going to govern every single nodes who are going to participate in that particular blockchain network apart from the restricted access that is given to the nodes there will be unequal rights given to all the nodes 
here every single node will not be treated same some nodes will be given special privileges to perform certain operations or perform certain task in that particular blockchain now when we talk about the examples of private blockchain ripple and hyperledger are very important and very renowned examples of private blockchain ripple is a business to business virtual currency exchange network so like your bitcoin which comes under the public blockchain network here ripple comes under the private blockchain network because it is a business to business private virtual currency exchange apart from that when we talk about hyperledger here it is an open source blockchain project with various applications now let's come to the merits and demerits of private blockchain here as you know that there are few number of nodes who are going to be a part of this blockchain network it can be from one single organization also that is why the transaction speed is very much high it can be in seconds also it is highly scalable because there are very few number of nodes as well as here there might not be a concept of per node validation that means every node might not might not be responsible for validating the block to be a part of the blockchain network so that is why this is highly scalable now when we talk about the demerits this type of blockchain is less secure when we compare it with public blockchain because there are very few nodes who are a part of this particular private blockchain so there will be few number of validations that will be done also not each and every node will be having equal rights that is why the algorithm might be different so in and all this is less secured when we compare it with the public blockchain here the private blockchain is less decentralized as we already have discussed that it is managed by a single authority here achieving the trust is difficult although we know the identity of each and every node but here the network is not trustworthy here the algorithm that is used might not be trustworthy so achieving the trust is difficult in this particular case so i hope the private blockchain is clear to you all now let's move on to the next type of blockchain which comes again under the permissioned blockchain and it is called as consortium blockchain now consortium blockchain is nothing but it is the type of blockchain which is governed by a group of organizations so here not only one organization is involved group of organizations are involved for business purpose or may, might be for some other reason now in consortium blockchain it enhances the decentralization when it compare when we compare it with private blockchain because here more than one organizations are involved here there is increased security because the shared governance in consortium blockchain leads to higher security levels as more than one organizations are involved in this particular type of blockchain that is why more number of nodes will be a part of the blockchain network more number of nodes means more number of validations so ultimately there will be high security in this case when we compare it with the private blockchain now when we talk about the merits of this it is best suited for the organizational collaboration when two or more organizations are going to collaborate then the consortium type of blockchain will be the best suited for them scalability and enhanced security is the next merit of this consortium blockchain because it is highly scalable and it has enhanced security when we compare it with private blockchain but still its security is lesser than the public blockchain better customizability and resource control here as you know that two or more organizations are involved so they might have their custom rules and regulations which are going to be followed inside the blockchain network apart from that the resource control can also be flexible now when we talk about the demerits of this consortium blockchain it is lesser transparent when we compare it with public blockchain there might be confidentiality inside the organizations also so it is less in transparency less anonymous compared to the other blockchains so in this consortium type of blockchain whichever nodes are going to be a part of this particular blockchain network here they are not going to be anonymous their identity can be revealed to each and every other node who is a part of that particular blockchain network so it is less anonymous than other blockchain networks so i hope the consortium blockchain network is clear to you all the major difference between consortium and private blockchain network is that inside private blockchain network a single organization has the central authority but when we talk about the consortium blockchain network here group of organizations governs the authority so i hope it is clear
Now let's move on to the next type of blockchain network, which is a combination of permission as well as permissionless blockchain network. It is called as hybrid blockchain network. Here, as we already discussed, so here the public as well as private elements are going to be combined to form this particular type of blockchain network. So this type of blockchain network offers flexibility as well as adaptability when it comes to structure that is followed. The major speciality of this type of blockchain is that they can be governed by both central authority as well as by one single consortium, that is group of organizations. Now by this type of blockchain, it allows diverse range of use cases. So many use cases can be built with the help of this hybrid blockchain. Walmart and IBM Food Trust are best example where hybrid blockchain networks are used. Now with this hybrid blockchains, the companies can display the listings to the public while keeping some data private. So it enhances the transparency as well as dependability and trust by automating the services for consumers as well as their employees. Apart from them, there are many other supply chain retailers who use hybrid blockchain technology. Now that we have seen the use cases, now let's have a look at the merits and demerits of hybrid blockchain. As you know, hybrid blockchain is a combination of permissionless as well as permissioned blockchain. So it balances the privacy as well as transparency. That means here transparency is also maintained. With that, the privacy is also maintained. It is adaptable for various applications. A huge range of applications can have, can make use of this particular hybrid blockchain. And apart from that, it has dual level security. So in security terms also, hybrid blockchain is best. Talking about the demerits, hybrid blockchain has complex governance structures because it is a combination of public as well as private elements. So the construction of both these elements will be required. So this makes it complex when it comes to structures. It has potential for centralization in certain scenarios. So this can be one drawback where the central authority can govern some particular amount of scenarios. And as it has a complex structure, it has to be carefully designed and implemented. So overall, I hope hybrid blockchain is clear to you all. And this brings us to the end of the video. We have discussed permission blockchain, permissionless blockchain. Inside permission blockchain, we have discussed private blockchain. Then we have discussed consortium blockchain. Apart from that, in permissionless blockchain, we have discussed public blockchain. And we also have discussed the combination of permissionless and permission blockchain, that is hybrid blockchain. I hope each and every type of blockchain is clear to you all. We also have discussed different scenarios where these type of blockchains are used. I hope everything is clear. If you guys have any single doubt, then you can straight away put it in the comment section. I will be very happy to solve all your doubts. For more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Please join me on Telegram and thanks for watching. Have a good day.